If you're tired of colors like gray, beige, and grayish, well, these three trending color pairings are going to tickle your fancy. I analyzed some trending color pairings in the design world, and then I brought them to my world of painting and decorating. I have three color pairings that are gonna be really dynamic and fun that hopefully you can incorporate in your home in some form or fashion. And as an added bonus for anyone that's a bit spooked by these bright colors, I have some more muted, desaturated pairings that are sort of based around the same color pairing altogether. You'll see what I mean in a second. So the first pairing we're looking at is lavender and teal. Ooh, isn't that pretty? So lavender, of course, being a pastel purple type of color. And then teal is a deep combination of green and blue. Beautiful. So the two colors that are going to replicate this pairing in the bare paint catalog, on location and bubble turquoise. So you can see the teal and bubble turquoise is very deeply saturated. The purple is, you know, pretty passive. There's maybe a bit of a red going on in the background as well, but it's not over overly vibrant and saturated. The two together, however, yeah, super dynamic. So my variation for those of you that are maybe a bit intimidated by the color is petal tip and atmospheric. So already you can see a much more settled down, toned down approach to this color pairing. One that is arguably more usable for more people, maybe not as fun, let's say. But hey, I won't judge whether you go one way or the other. Generally speaking, the bolder option is probably gonna be better for accessories and things within the space rather than the walls themselves. And then petal tip, I could totally see being a great bathroom color, a bedroom color. The purple aspect does make it a little suspect when it comes to a hallway color or something that's more predominant in your space because you do have to think about that purple undertone. Atmospheric, to me, surprisingly, is a little more user-friendly, I would say, than Petal Tip because it has that very soft, muted, grayed out aspect, dare I say, but you definitely do notice the blue and the green within it. This is a color that you can use as a gentle accent color or even a wall color as long as you have a decent amount of lighting to support it. So there you have it, lavender and teal done two ways. Next up we have the next very much trending color pairing is sage green and mustard. So we have two colors that are within the warm color family. The sage green that I'm going with also has that bit of a yellow undertone happening too. It's not a grayed out version of sage. It's called sap green. It is a lighter mid-tone color, but it's very uplifting and overall a great color even to use on walls. So unlike the last color pairing, this is one that is a little more practical, at least this color, because the next one is called Dandelion Wish. It's very much a rich mustard that doesn't come in a squeeze bottle. You gotta scoop it out with a knife because it's very, very much loaded with saturation. This is not a color you would likely see in large doses in a whole room. Maybe you're more likely to see it on a front door as an accent color or some painted furniture. I think that'd be great. In fact, if you had sap green on the walls and then maybe a little area rug that had some of Dandelion Wishes yellow, that could be cool. A much simpler alternative would be the pairing of Yoga Days and Candlewick. So they're just very much pastel versions of both colors. They're in the 70s LRV wise, which means they're gonna reflect quite a bit of light. So much so that if you have a ton of light coming in, they may feel a bit washed out. So so they're a great choice if you want something a little more airy and carefree as a pairing. This third color pairing is everywhere these days. It's peach and royal blue. So what's fun here is peach is kind of like a beigey color, but what it contains is a red undertone, kind of like your terracottas, your rust colors, all the colors of the year from 2023, apparently. But then royal blue is a little bit of a nuanced approach to blue, especially with respect to paint colors, because normally you see a lot more navy blues, darker blues that are almost blackened and shaded, but not in this pairing. What we have here is Sweet Pastel and Beacon Blue. Very, very dynamic relationship. It's funny because when you see Sweet Pastel on its own, it does look pretty neutral and beigey, but combined with the blue, that rosy peachy quality really becomes prominent and sort of completes the look in a beautiful, beautiful way. I love the way these two interact and I think it could look amazing in a bedroom just by exploring these colors because blue and beige on their own have been used for many, many years in design. So this is an evolution of that. Instead of beige, you have that peachiness. Instead of a standard blue, you got this beautiful royal blue that is so saturated. A much more passive version of this would be Jodhpur Tan and Stargazer. So really this just ends up being a very muted beigey color and a bit of a cool gray. So you still have that interaction of warm and cool, but in much more muted fashion. This is gonna be the color pairing that is maybe gonna be the easiest for most people to accept and digest, but not very exciting. I try to serve everybody on this channel. So whether you're someone who likes neutrals 
and just passive colors to blend in, or if you really love looking at trends and diving knee deep into them, or you just wanna see some fun, bright, dynamic color pairings. Hopefully you got at least one of those things in this video. Click that subscribe button if you've made it this far. We do six videos a week consistently, full-time YouTuber over here, and you can check this video out next for more painting and decorating fun.